Welcome back, everyone. Toys is here, and I am back yet again for yet another McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse video. The Amazon Fairy paid a late night visit to my home. A little notification was like, hey, I know it's like, I don't know, 9 30, 10 o'clock, but you might have a package at the door. And lo and behold, opened it up to discover that it was none other than my brand new mega figure Dark Side, of which I have definitely been looking forward to. Look at them all, Dark Sidey in that packaging. Now this is being hailed as a DC classic under that little label of theirs. Old school, definitely superpowers. You get the idea. Here's the barcode. Like I said, mine came from Amazon. So this is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Mega Figure from their DC Classics line, the Superpowers Dark Side. And so now here's everything taken out of the packaging. You got a figure, you got a couple accessories, and to be honest with you, if you could pose them just like this, that's all I really wanted out of Dark Side. You do get several hand accessories. You get a point in hand, you get a mother box, boom tube holding hand, maybe an infinity equation holding hand. The extra head portraits with the Omega Beams just kinda starting to blip into existence. They nailed that. That is an excellent head portrait. It's the simplistic blue. You've got a very detailed head, not overly detailed. The teeth are good. I know I've been on a rant about the teeth. I like what you did with the teeth and the effects. You can hear them. You can hear the energy starting to uh, Kirby crackle around him. That is well done. They nailed it. That's one of the best head portraits that McFarlane Toys has ever done. When you want to swap said head portraits, the ball peg is not going to move around. It is static in there, so just be careful. And be careful of the cape material. You kind of have to fit it between all of that. It simply just pops in. They pretty much swip swap easy peasy, at least on my end, so you'd have no problems with that. And it just looks cool. I love it. That is a powerful, power-ish, it's just a great extra head portrait. It's going to be minimal as heck in the articulation. He's going to basically look left and right barely. He's kind of got an ab crunch, waist swivel. You can kind of get him looking up in that sense. Kind of works with you, but not really. Just as a heads up, the articulation on this is very minimal. But just be careful with the red effect pieces. You don't want to snap anything off. Some of them can be brittle. The actual dark side himself, the figure with the more, we'll just say normal-ish, solemn looking dark side head with his hands behind his back. As much as you can do that. I wish you could go just a little bit further, but you get the idea. That is dark side. That's how he will be displayed on my shelf. The <laughs> for whatever reason, the elbows on this sucker are really hard to just move, especially right out the box. As I started kind of messing with them, they kind of eased up a little bit, but it's, it's kind of one of those things. So as much as I'm going to, and keep this in mind, praise this figure, there are some issues with it, much like the usual thing with McFarlane toys. The medallion on his chest, along with the cape, those aren't coming off unless you want to customize this whole thing and rip them off yourself. He's going to have a huge hole in his chest. Wait till the inevitable next dark side if you don't like this superpowers one. That's basically what it is. No, dark side usually doesn't have a cape, but when he does have a cape, and it's a really nice material cape, I'll give it to him. It's bendy wire. It's a little hard to kind of mess around with to get it in that kind of just it's just draped down sort of position. But getting it all billowy and flowy like he's standing above a fire pit in Apocalypse, you could totally do that. His thigh high boots are all kinds of crazy. He's definitely going demure fall. That's for sure. In all honesty, it's a very simplistic dark side, but that's what I wanted from this. You do get plenty of articulation in the arms, but the arms are gonna pop out on you, just FYI. And no, they're not extremely loose. They're not just falling out. You do have to kinda yank them out, but in some cases on this side, if you move it, it will come out with little to no force. But if you hold him by his arm and jangle him around, no, it's not going to come out. It's one of those We've seen this so many times, kind of QC issue with McFarlane toys, and yet it still just keeps happening, but yet we still keep 
buying them. So that is the true infinite crisis of it all. And like I said, you really have to yank the arm out for it to come out. Now, I'm not going to make excuses for them. Some companies build in this kind of thing if kids want to play with them so it doesn't break. Kind of like Transformers. But let's be honest, the kids playing with a $40 figure is going to be few and far between these days. This is a collector's figure, and we really don't like the arms popping off every two seconds. So Again, McFarlane Toys, we've been over this and everything else. You got to do better with this stuff. Now, if you ask me, here's the figure. What would you change on this? Definitely the arms. They are reused for Mongol, but he has veins. And Darkseid has craggy, like, cement-type skin. The legs to the boots, that's the type. The skin around his head, that's the type of skin I'm talking about. This is clearly reused. He has veins. It is craggy with veins. Is it a huge problem? No. But is it something that I would have said, yes, it needs to be a certain look, a certain way to really nail home the look of Darkseid? That's what I would tell you. That's what I would say to the people designing this. It shouldn't have been reused. It is. But then again, it's just kind of like, all right, well, I guess you got lucky on this one. It's fine. I don't think a lot of people are going to care as much. But the, the skin is supposed to be kind of rocky, put little lines in there. It's that sort of deal other than skin with veins, if that makes any sense. And no, for those wondering, he is not going to be sitting on any type of throne anytime soon with that rubber diaper crotch piece it's not going to help you. He'll barely kick off to the side. They kind of go up. Uh, it's, it's again, a very limited articulation dark side. And of course, he has double jointed knees, but I ask you why? What's the point of double jointed knees for a character like dark side? Yeah, you can get a kind of battling Superman or you can have him squashing Superman's face to kind of keep him under his heel. Speaking of that, the feet will go up and down. They'll sort of rock to and fro, and he has toe articulation. But what are these lines right here? It looks like a mistake. Like, these are part of perhaps the whole digital sculpting process, and they got left. It. That's really odd that those are in there. It looks like a mistake. It doesn't look like they are supposed to be in there. Again, much like the arms, it's really hard to move around the feet, the toes. He does have peg holes on the bottom. Now, with all my nitpicks aside, the look, the articulation for me, the cape, the swappable head portraits, I do like this dark side, but the belt, if I had to change one major thing, the belt looks like a piece of white rubber that you just kind of curled around. It doesn't look like a professional toy company made that belt kind of sort of this figure. You know what I'm saying? It looks like a custom in that sense. It's way too large. It doesn't really work. It just, it looks odd. So those are my thoughts on this figure. But through all that, how does he scale with Superman? So here are my two faves of the soups. You have the Superman 1000 with the longer hair. I just swapped the heads and you have the Infinite Crisis Superman with the Superman 1000 head portrait for those wondering. So that's that's the streams of my customizable ability. It's my kit bashing as they say, but they look cool. So depending on which Superman you want to go with, I would say that that's an appropriate height for dark side and it is fun with the capes, with the bendy wires, getting them all into those epic comic book poses. Yes, it makes for a fun dark side for your DC multiverse collection. And to then have dark side posed with other DC characters like Wonder Woman, Firestorm, Aquaman, Flash. Yeah, he totally goes. This is a fun villain to have. And yes, on my Instagram, I will pull Calabac out and we'll have a proper look scale wise for him. I just couldn't pull him out at the moment. But here's Bane. And we all know the scale problems with DC Multiverse. So to say Bane is taller than Darkseid, that's totally weird. But these two characters are never going to meet and they shouldn't, even though it's DC Multiverse, just let it go. Darkseid's an appropriate height. So that will wrap it up for my quick look at the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse mega figure, Darkseid. There are a lot of QC issues with this guy, even though just in standing him on your shelf, he looks dang good. But as a consumer, as you coming here to hear my thoughts, I'm telling you, this may not be the dark side that you want just yet. Perhaps wait for the inevitable skirt piece dark side, missing the D on his chest, missing the cape. 
Just wait. Be patient. We've seen it many times with McFarlane Toys. They release one, and then they come out with the one you inevitably want. Just have some patience. Or if you really like it, sure, it's okay. But in all honesty, I'm going to tell you, maybe wait for a sale on this guy. Because those QC problems, they're problems. They're things that shouldn't exist this late in the game for this line. So, you've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything DC Multiverse. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, now we need parademons. Now we need the female furies. And most of all, we need grainy goodness. And if you want to throw in Desaad, sure, why not? And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.